Booties for Black Girl Nerds. So can you guys tell me what stood out about this uh, script? What made you choose it? The uniqueness was what drew us to the project uh, immediately, for sure. It also was, um, like, we talked about we talked about this a lot after we, we got the job, but I think even when I got the audition to play Haniwa, I was like, I don't think that they're going to cast me in this because this is like the lead role and I don't know if they're going to want to put like two black kids as like the first people that can see. Um, and so that obviously was very like exciting when I ended up getting the call back, but just the the world in general was just so different and so unique and I love sci-fi as a genre and I love how this has such a massive scope and so yeah. It's exciting to be a part of a world that is just so effortlessly diverse like in a world where racial politics aren't a thing anymore because mm -hmm. everybody's blind you don't have to have a question of like a dominant race there isn't there isn't that you see that in the show there isn't one and so it was just so exciting for us mm -hmm. as you know two mixed race actors being like this is a show about us mm -hmm. that isn't about the fact that we're mixed race, like as mm -hmm. incredible as that is. Mm -hmm. Like this is about everything else, it's about family and love and loyalty mm -hmm. and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being in a world where everything is blind, you've only seen this um, one landscape your whole life. What do you think it's like for your characters to read about sh read Shakespeare and visualize that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I I always imagined Haniwa to to be kind of like how I was when I was a teenager and mm -hmm. I would read books and I would watch TV shows um, and she would daydream, like she would read about women wearing dresses and how those dresses would be described or perhaps how music would sound and she would imagine and daydream and that is what fueled her so much to want to go out into the world and explore it and, and what made her so adventurous and such a dreamer is that she would daydream reading those books mm -hmm. and imagine what it would be like to live as as one of her ancestors. Mm -hmm. What I think is so beautiful as well in this is, you know, with no spoilers, but you know, some of the things that maybe we've read, and then you know, some of the things that we then come like, come across that we've read or heard about like, from the books, and sometimes the letdown of like of what visually the aesthetic of them are like, and mm -hmm. actually sometimes our imagination was better, and like the way that we imagine these things, and mm -hmm. it really kind of like kind of hit home with some of the focus and the importance of like sight and like the the way like how like the importance that we put on sight mm -hmm. um and sometimes just actually the interaction with something or the feeling that something makes you feel like actually that's what that's what's important that's yeah. what's beautiful about a thing an object a person whatever it could be can you guys tease um just the different mentalities that your characters have because we saw it a little bit in the second episode where mm -hmm. Your character was excited to read, and your character is kind of like, mm, I'm cool with my life. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 like opposite twins. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely more uh, the the more adventurous and and reckless one, and um, she's very impulsive and emotional, and can be a little bit bratty, but she um, cares so much about what the power of vision could mean and what it could mean to the world. And she, she sees a really, really big purpose in herself and, and wants to fulfill it. Yeah. yeah, and Kofun is, you know, he's, he's very emotional. He's very connected to his sensitivity. He's, I think, fiercely intelligent. He is, you know, a lot of those things he has, he has got uh, a warrior inside him, but it's, it's locked down, like, pretty deep and mm -hmm. in an ideal world the things that have rung true to him are the things that Alchemy hold dear they are family their community they are one like they are one Alchemy and if in an ideal world he would have stayed there forever mm -hmm. he, he wouldn't he wouldn't leave he doesn't have to leave he the idea of that scares him and you know everything that he has been taught is that the world is family and we what we have having each other is the world and so the idea of leaving that unsettles him and mm -hmm. and so yeah it takes it takes a lot for the ambition and the drive which is in there you know they they have a lot of similarities it's in there and he sees it and he acknowledges it but he has to fight for to make it seen and to acknowledge that maybe he wants the same things i love black girl nerds i've been following um, you guys Black girl
nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.